much wrong. That one is uh, when you are Sorry. sick, you are like, oh, I'm, I'm going to die. Well, That's another. So we're going we're gonna to dive into understanding it because my goal is to help us to eliminate it ultimately so that we can actually go beyond it. All right, you know, so that we can go beyond it. Because one of the things about fear uh, is that it can become quite, it can, it can paralyze us. It can literally leave us in a situation where we do not do the things that we can do to really be, become more successful in all the various areas of our life. Whether it is in our community, in our family, in business, you know, all the various things that we're trying to achieve what happens is that the word fear, you know, it's something that we have as a passenger and we should never have it as a driver in our lives. But a lot of us use it to guide our actions as opposed to using it more like a signal to tell us, all right, maybe I should go in another direction or maybe I should try something else and maybe I should move a little bit faster. But oftentimes it is the driving factor in our lives. It's the driving force. So let's really look at it. And let's look at where it, where it began, where it, where it comes from. I believe in looking at the root cause. I don't believe that we should look at the symptom, which is, okay, if I don't pay my rent, then I'm going to get evicted. Um, so if you get evicted, you get to another place, right? <laughs> and if, let's just use that example. Let's say you do not have the money to pay the rent. Is it reason to be afraid? Uh, because the, if you can't pay the rent, you'll have to find somewhere else to go. So being in a state of fear and then the resulting adrenaline that damages our cells, when our cells get damaged, it runs into a situation where we have stress in our body. When the stress is in the body because of the fretting and the worrying and the anxiety, what then happens? The stress then leads to what's called disease. Now, the word disease, somebody could put it in the chat for me, type this, D-I-S hyphen ease, A-E-A-S-E, dis-ease. So let's just really evaluate how disease comes about, dis-ease. Somebody type in the chat, D-I-S hyphen ease. So it means that we're not at ease why dis-ease comes about. And we're really the ones who ultimately cause it because of worry and anxiety. Worry and anxiety comes from a false foundation, all right? And we're going to dive a bit into looking at where it is that fear really originates from and how is it that it comes about. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adeaze. <laughs> this is. So what's happening is that we're not at ease why a, a, a sense of disease comes about. Now, the ease that this refers to is being at ease in terms of our spirit, soul, and our body. And the fear that we experience, that we put in place, because we are the ones who generate the fear. In the moment that we're on this line together, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's only based on the possibility of an outcome that we're describing in a way that we may not necessarily want. For example, let's look at re-articulating the example that Abigail gave about being afraid. So you're concerned that if you do not pay your rent on time, then you're going to get evicted. If you get evicted, you don't have anywhere to live. If you don't have anywhere to live, you know, you might end up um, in a tough situation. If you're in a tough situation, you might die. <laughs> all right? Because that's the, we're going to come back to why it's always back to dying. So the, the whole idea is that instead of saying to ourselves, okay, if I, get, if, if I don't have the money to pay the rent, I'm going to get evicted, then I become afraid. What we could then say is, okay, so I don't have the money rent money to pay the rent what i'll have to do is to make some alternative arrangements maybe i have to go and stay a relative maybe i have to move back if you're in nigeria I have to move back to the village or if you're in kenya I have to move back to the village or if you're in jamaica <laughs> moving moving with a relative if, you, if you're in the united states you have to go to a home shelter all right in the united states there's no relative and friend that generally wants to put their arms around you <laughs> that easily okay so the simple thing is that being able to re-articulate the situation is where we're going to be able to overcome our fears. Because what happens is that it's, the re it's really the way we describe a situation that puts us into fear. 
And that's why it's false evidence appearing real. What we have to do to be afraid is to use a situation and describe it in a way that we do not want to experience. For example, uh, we are seeing some economies around the world, like Lebanon, Argentina, Nigeria, you know, um, Turkey. They're in what's called free fall, uh, where their currency values are just going down quite rapidly. And in those economies, there would be a lot of reasons to what we call be afraid. But at the same time, while people are looking at the declining values of currencies, while people are looking at things not going well in those environments, there are other people who are looking at it how can I actually use it to take myself to a higher level? How can I use it to become even more prosperous, become even more successful than I am already? So it all depends on how you're going to define it. It all depends on how you're going to um, be the one to describe that particular situation as to whether or not you're going to experience fear or not. But I want to go a little bit deeper. And you know, I want us to unmute for different people, unmute and just share. What do you think, where do you think fear originates from? Where does it originate from? Somebody tell me, what, what is the foundation of fear? What is the basis of it? Anyone, just jump right in. Go ahead, Rosemary, unmute and tell me. An excellent afternoon, Dr. Harvey, an excellent afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, so I think personally that fear comes from a place of distrust, um, uncertainty, um, when you're not sure of what the next move will be, and you don't trust yourself, or you don't trust the system, or you don't trust um, uh, whatever it is that is responsible for what you're supposed to do, you don't trust them enough that um, they are going to um, be able to deliver. So I think that's where fear comes from, from a place of distrust and uncertainty. That's where I think fear comes from. All right, thank you very much for um, sharing. Anyone else you wanna go ahead and, and give us a perspective on it? Next person, anyone else, just jump right in. Thank you very much. Where do you fear, think fear originates fear from? The devil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> all right. That's that, that. You know that that has some value to it, though. Though that's you know it's funny, but um, we could look at that, right? We could look at the word devil, and we'll talk about that a bit. Anyone else? Thank you Hello. very much, Abigail. Uh, I think fear comes from our minds. It's your mind that tells you something is going to happen in a negative way that makes you feel the fear. All right, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Milka. All right, and that comes from the, we're gonna come and talk about the, the idea of the devil and the whole, you know, how that relates to suggestions that cause fearfulness, all right? The word devil, how we use the word as opposed to, anyway, we'll talk about that. Who else, do, who else wants to jump in? Anyone else wants to jump in and let's let's talk about uh, yeah, this is this um, is Adeva. Hello, everyone. Okay, I just wanted to mention that you know sometimes when you're unsure of your ability or you're inadequately prepared for something, you know, you tend to mask it, mask it with a lot of fear. So maybe to overcome that, sometimes we may just have to be able to you know help ourselves become more positive minded. Uh, much more optimistic and maybe prepare a little bit more for whatever it is. All right. That, <clears throat> thank you very much, Ada Great, Grateful for that perspective. Uh, anyone else wants to jump in? Go ahead. Anyone else wants to jump in? It's, I'd love to be interactive. I don't like to be the only one up here talking. <laughs> All right. Anyone else wants to chime in? Go ahead. All right. All right. All right. So, all right. So, so thank you very much, Adeza. So, where fear originates from, right? Where fear originates from. And um, the, when something, when we get to the root of something, then the fruits of the roots disappear. Once you get to the root of something, then the, the fruits disappear because any plant that's in your yard or maybe at your front door and every time you come home there's a particular plant that whenever it blooms 
the fragrance is nice, but it causes allergies. Now, if we keep just all, all the time, we chop the branches off or we pick off the flowers before they bloom, we're always having to do something to eliminate the cause of the allergies. But if we took up the roots of the tree or the plant, then we would no longer have that challenge of experiencing the fragrance to cause our allergies to be disturbed, right? Or the fragrance to cause us to have an allergic reaction. So going to the root cause is the way to overcome fear. Because if we do not go to the root cause, there's always something that's causing us to feel caged and causing us to feel trapped. So identifying the, the cause of it and the origin of it is where we get power. Because once you know that you have the cause, once you can uproot the cause, then there's no longer anything that's going to be blocking you or causing you to experience the fear. Now, there are two comments that came through that are helping to point us in the right direction. And the two comments are, one, fear originates from our mind. So firstly, we have to realize that whenever we're feeling afraid about something, it is something that's happening within us in terms of how we're describing a particular situation that's resulting us in us feeling that way. And there's another dynamic to the way the mind functions. There are a lot of programs that came from past experiences that we may have had, that our collective human body may have had. And these experiences, as they are rising within us, and the they, they create memory patterns of thought. So whenever you interact with someone or a situation or a circumstance, you're going to have a memory of thoughts that come up relative to that particular circumstance. And then that memory of thought is going to cause you to feel a certain way because thoughts and feelings are linked together. So if the example that Abigail was giving about worried about Let's say, you know, you want to make sure you pay your rent so that you don't have to fret about it or worry about what the outcome could be. It's because normally what generally happens is that you've seen where people have not done that on time and the outcome has not been enjoyable for them. You know, they have lost their home or lost their apartment and then they were kicked out and all of the various things happen with that. So our mind plays that set of images for us as possibilities and then what we're doing is that putting ourselves in that movie of our mind playing out that circumstance and situation and we are going to have the byproduct of the adrenaline the chemicals and the damage to the cells the stress and eventually disease and it could land us into disease that's why a lot of people could put themselves into anxiety and worry and end up in the hospital you know i've seen Many times I've seen an individual who's running around playing tennis and some of you may have known a relative or a friend that this may have happened to. And you could have one in the chat if this story is something that you have heard about or maybe had the experience of, a, of it happening to someone you know. Where they're running around, they're doing well, they're very fit. And then they go to the doctor for a routine checkup and then they're diagnosed with cancer. And all of a sudden, they start to look sick. They start to look unwell. And some people have even gone on to the point where they die in a few months after being very fit and strong. Put a one in the chat if you could relate to that, right? Put a one in the chat if you could relate to that experience. Having maybe, thank you very much, Milka. You have, you have had someone go through that, right? Or know someone who has been through that cycle. So the question is, is it the, thank you, Scola. Thank you, Rosemary. Right? So question then, is it the, cancer that caused them to have the rapid decline in their health or is it the diagnosis and the possible outcome right that they're this is going to happen this is what could happen that really caused their health to decline rapidly right put a number two in the chat if you think it was the you know the, 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 it was the actual disease or it was their mind now that went into overdrive about the negative outcomes and the challenges that they're having that would have caused their health to deteriorate so quickly. And I think the answer is pretty self-evident. So what happens is that we have to realize that we're the ones doing it to ourselves and not the circumstance or the situation doing it to us. It is us doing it, not the situation doing it. Now, obviously, you know, it runs a little deeper than that. And fear itself in terms of the foundation, 
it comes from a false foundation to begin with. Because what happens is that we see ourselves in a way that puts us in a position where we, we experience some fears. Two fears are foundational to human identity. The first one is the fear of death. That one is inherent in being human. Now, the per it has a good purpose. Fear of death has a good purpose. Um, in the sense that if you're beside a cliff, okay, the fear of dying would cause you to stay away from the cliff. If you're trying to cross the street and a car is about to hit you, the fear of death will cause you to jump back. So the fear of death has its usefulness in terms of practical living on the planet. The other fear is the fear of heights, right? If you, there's a study that shows that children, if you put them close to somewhere to fall away, they will not go to the place that will fall away. Children will just stay away from falling off a high cliff because of the fear of heights. So those two are built in to protect us as human beings. But the other fears, fear of what, what is going to happen if I lose my money? What is going to happen if I lose my, my car? What is going to happen if I lose my job? These are fears that we put imagination to an outcome, and then we're damaging ourselves in the process of it. Now, it has some usefulness in the sense that you could evaluate the, in the particular circumstance and decide if you're going to use it to act in a certain way. So, for example, you could evaluate the situation and say, okay, if this doesn't happen, that's going to happen. Maybe I should do this instead, you know, so that, that I don't have that particular experience. But in terms of staying in a place of anxiety and worry and fret, which would now damage your cells, release adrenaline, you know, cause you to have sleepless nights, this is us doing that to ourselves. That's not the situation. It's us actually playing out and rehearsing a negative outcome that's really causing the dis-ease in our body. And what it does, it literally blocks us from creativity. Whenever our mind is so clouded by what's happening on a negative standpoint, it blocks us from the creative flow that's inherent in us. We are creative by nature. We are problem solvers. We are solution providers by nature. But what ends up happening is that we get blocked in and locked in whenever we're experiencing the, the rehearsing of fear. And we're literally rehearsing the outcome towards our disadvantage. We're rehearsing the outcome towards hurting ourselves instead of being in a place where we are being creative, we're being solution oriented, we're being a problem solver. Because instead what we did was we took the outcome that could hurt us rather than look at an outcome that could help us. And we have to remember if we're going to escape it, it's us doing it, not the situation doing it. And that's where our power is. Our power is in describing the situation so that we do not describe it in a way that hurts us and hurts ourselves and hurts our body ultimately. Because whenever we're rehearsing a negative outcome, we are, we, are, we are having a chemical bath. When we're rehearsing a negative outcome, we're giving ourselves in our body a chemical, a chemical bath of adrenaline and all of the various toxins that are associated with it. So what we have to do is to extricate ourselves from that conversation. But it goes a little bit deeper, and I'll share with you the false foundation of fear. So what happens is that the, the key fear that we're all, we're all trying to avoid is the fear of death. That's the key one, right? Let's just evaluate this. Let's say you have a job, right? Let's talk about a job. And if, you, if you're working, there's the worry that, man, you know, I hope my company doesn't close. Because if my company closed, I, I would lose my job. And if I lose my job, right, what are we worried about? Is it the job? I want, to, I want us to unmute and let's talk about where where fear really comes from okay all right so we talk about it is it really the job that we're worried about anybody on you is it the job that we're worried about that we're going to lose okay this is adar again i mean you know given myself as an example and maybe a few colleagues that i know i think in that instance fear would come from knowing that you know, outside of that job, there's nothing else, you know, so we haven't developed ourselves to the point where, you know, we can actually leave outside of that job, you know, so I think that's where the fear is. All right, so, so okay, so move from, so we lose the job, All right? What is it that the job provides that causes us to feel okay? Money. All right. 
So we're, we're really afraid of, is it the job we're afraid of losing or is it the income that the job provides? The income. So the income, yeah. Income. All right. So let's move it back a little, little bit further. So it, it, the income. Now, what is it that the income does that causes us to feel okay? The income provides us to get food, to pay our bills, and even to put gas in our cars, to move around. So the income does a lot to us. All right. So let's move it. Let's put the gas one aside, but let's look at the food. So the income provides us money to get food. So, okay. Forget about the income. Let's look at the food. So what the food, the presence of food, what does that causes us to feel okay about what is it that the food does for us that makes us feel okay it fills you up and in the process it keeps you alive it keeps you alive so therefore then if we take the food away what what it is that we're really concerned about death death so yeah. here's the thing <laughs> so any one of them it doesn't matter if you call it the fear of, of you know, whatever, whatever you're trying to, you're trying to be afraid of. <laughs> okay. I don't care how fancy we describe the fears and give them all sorts of fear of mosquitoes, fear of spiders. All it comes down to, ladies and gentlemen, is the fear of death. That's it. We are afraid to die. And because we're afraid to die, everything that we're doing is to avoid the fear of death. We try to earn as much money as we can so that we have enough money to pay the bills so that we can pay the bills, can buy food, we can have a house to live in so that we don't die. And any one of the areas you look at, it comes back to the fear of death. Now, if you then take the time, and this is the way to eliminate the fear totally. I'm giving you, because I spoke about the fruits and I spoke about the root. So the cause is not the job. The cause is not the economy. The cause is not none of these things. But what fear does, it blocks creativity. So as Ada explained about, you know, okay, we didn't develop ourselves. Okay, so let's start developing ourselves in other areas. Let's start expanding ourselves in, um, in using some of the other opportunities that are out there rather than the comfort zone of where we are right now. You know, uh, one of the security features to not, um, the word about the outcome financially is to have multiple ways for us to have money, <laughs> right? Which is one of the ways, all right? But the, the ultimate way is to become so self-aware that you'll realize that you cannot die. The only way to escape fear of death is to realize you cannot die. And until you realize that, I don't mean theoretically, I don't mean philosophically, I don't even mean metaphysically. You'll have to have a realization of it for real to where you will know that you are a spirit and a soul. You'll have to know that though. You cannot believe it. You cannot read it in a book. You cannot agree with me because it sounds logical. You'll have to know it the way you have air coming through your nostrils. And when you know that for real, and it's, not, it's no longer a conversation. It's no longer a, 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 a thing, that, something that you read in a book. It's not because somebody told you in your particular spiritual organization that you are spirit and soul. You'll have to know it the way you know you have a physical body on this line with us today. And it is that level of knowing that will allow for you to mature out of, ah, oh, I cannot die. Because once you realize that you cannot die, it starts to minimize the feeling of fear about the outcomes. Because, okay, so if I can't die, why am I worried about food? Why am I worried, you know, when the, the body at some point, I'll have to put it now. Well, not me, but somebody's going to put it in a box, hopefully, <laughs> and it goes into the ground. So worrying about the body and the time at which it ends up in the ground is really just useless. You know, and worry is like, is the same as paying interest on money that we have never borrowed. That's what worry is. Worry is paying interest on money you didn't borrow. You still pay the interest, meaning the pain, the, the cells breaking down, the stress in the body, temper, 
the dis-ease, which is a disease that results from the result from the worry and the anxiety and the fears associated with the outcomes that we're concerned about. But once we mature to the place where we start to realize that, okay, so what I'm really afraid of is death. I'm not really afraid of the other things. Those are just the fruits that come from the root cause of being afraid to die. And being afraid to die comes from a false foundation. And the false foundation is I'm only a human being. And once we have localized ourselves, for those of us who are still maybe at a place of believing that I am only a human being, you are a human being, but you're not only a human being. The human being is the, is the astronaut suit that we wear to go to the moon to move around. And the moon in this case is planet Earth. So we have a body as a suit to move around. But because of how we have been cultured and the way we grew up on our belief systems that we inherited from those around us, we believe that the body is our identity. We believe that we are, you know, Irene, Annette, as our parents have described us to be and gave us a name. And our sense of self is so locked into that small sense of identity that the issues associated with living feel anxious. But when you have matured through practices like meditation and affirmative prayer and selfless service, life visioning and spiritual study that eliminates that block and perception that we have that we're only a human being and you have expanded your perception to realize that you do have a soul and a spirit right now, not in the future sometime, but immediately that is you, that is your real identity and, and that's the foundation of our being. With that foundation, that foundation is truth. It's solid. The foundation of being only a human being is false because it's never true. It was never true and it can never be true. And no matter how much, you know, we read about it and can try to convince ourselves of that, it will never be true. The truth about ourselves is that we're spirit, soul with a body. And because we have localized our identity to a sense of a body, that is where the foundation cause of fear comes from. And until you address that foundation cause of fear, you're going to have to find other ways to manage these fruits, which means cutting off the branches of the tree at the doorway to prevent the fragrance from being released. Because once the branch is there and the flower blooms, the fragrance comes out and it causes your allergies. <laughs> so then if you're not dealing with the root cause, then you're ultimately always going to have to deal with fear in one way or the other. And what it's doing if you're not addressing the root cause, it's blocking your creative juices. It's blocking your strength. It's blocking your peace of mind. It's blocking your joy. You know, it's interfering with being able to be okay, even when the economic situations are changing. Some of us have heard that you'll see a thousand fall by your left hand and your right side, but they will not come near your doorstep. What it's talking about is when you have that resting on, in your inner self, your soul and your spirit. Because once you're resting there as your sense of self, then as the body and the world is going through its changes, you're not feeling like, oh, I'm falling apart or my life is falling to shambles because you're not in, you're not off the world. But once you're off the world, once our sense of identity is, oh, okay, I, you know, I'm Dr. Harry Benjamin. So because I'm a doctor, that's why I feel good about myself. You know, because I have a house up on a hill, I have two cars in the garage, I have a wife, I have children. When those reasons become the reasons why you feel okay, then what happens when those things fall away from you? Then you're no longer okay and you fall into a sense of disrepair and you fall into a sense of anxiety. That's why, you know, <laughs> some people, when they lose their valuables, they'll jump off a bridge or they'll jump off a building because they, they, their sense of who they were was based on all of these things that they had. So what we have to do to eliminate fear totally is to go to the root cause. And the root cause is a false identity. Once that false identity has been eliminated from your awareness, once you become aware of your true identity, the truth will make us free from everything, including fear. The truth shall make us free. So that's the essence of, you know, what it is that I wanted to bring across and through this dialogue that we have, because we started having these dialogues, welcome, you know, so two, we have two new people here, Dr. Dr. King's, Dr. Leke. A friend of mine and uh, Ada is a, you know, and I see people jump, jump in and out. But here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, in simple terms, it comes down to that. Yes, you know, the mind is where it, 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 it's the mind that describes the event. 
that causes us to feel fear. But the way the mind works, it has two areas, right? It has an area that thoughts that come from that area are based on the false foundation of being only a human. If that's our way of perceiving, then the thoughts that come out of that are all going to be fearful. Every one of them will have fear tied into it because the foundation of it is, a, is fear. Now, those that originate from wholeness, those that originate from our God identity, spirit and soul, those thoughts have faith in them. They are whole, they're joyful, they're peaceful. They are not descriptions that would cause you to feel afraid. So becoming aware of the true identity of ourselves, it allows for you to have the power of choosing these thoughts coming from these two areas. You literally will become so strong that you'll see the thoughts coming out of the ocean or you know, some people call it the sea of mental garbage. But you'll see those thoughts coming out of that realm of how we live and who we are, and you'll literally be able to observe them. You literally, through meditation and affirmative prayer over time, you'll be able to see the negative thoughts coming up, trying to get you to be afraid, trying to tell you, what if you lose it? What if you this? What if you that? What if you that? And you'll see them coming out, but you do not have to buy into them. You'll be able to see them and say, okay, that's interesting. Okay, that's one way of looking at it. But with that level of awareness, you now get a different way of looking at it. And instead of saying, well, what if, what if, um, what if I, I, I didn't pay my rent? Well, yeah, I would, I would have to find somewhere else to go. Okay, so if I have to find somewhere else to go, then where could I go? And in that way, your mind starts to provide you with options as opposed to, whoa, you know, can you imagine what would happen if I did this, I did that? Instead of that level of thinking, instead you could start to allow your mind to provide you with options and solutions. Okay, well, you have this relative, you have that friend, you know, you could also do this to generate more income so that you do not have to actually move on. You could also go and develop yourself another business. You could go and start another um, area of, of, you know, using this particular gift or talent that you've always had that you haven't been using. Why don't you go and start doing this particular area? So our, our mind will provide us with solutions, but we cannot hear those thoughts of creativity, ideas, solutions. We cannot hear those thoughts when our mind is focused on fear and worry and anxiety. So we have to then meditate we have to affirm to remove ourselves from being tied up in a only and only human identity because that is where the perceptions come from that causes us to see things in a fearful way because that's the foundation of fear. Fear comes from a false identity. That's why the statement says false evidence appearing real because it's a false sense of self that we're trying to protect. What, it re what we're really trying to try to avoid is the inescapable. We just resolved it, right? We, we spoke about the job, the money, the food, death, <laughs> right? So if you're trying to avoid death and the body's going to die anyway, why are we trying to avoid it? Why are we trying to invest all this energy and time on worrying about avoiding what we're going to experience anyway? So what we have to then do with fear is to use it more like a signal to guide us. Okay, so, all right. So, okay, so that, that could happen. What do I need? To do to not have that experience because what we're afraid of is the experience we're afraid of the experience we're all going to experience a point when the body goes away so that experience is you know, unavoidable we all may some of us may have to experience losing our house losing our car some of us may have to have that experience but it's an experience and in the experience there are lessons that we can learn but to avoid the experience we can do things as contingencies to avoid the experience. And that avoiding of the experience is the only thing that we can really truly do. We can then, instead of dealing with doing things to mitigate against having a negative experience in our lives, we could sit down in worry and anxiety about the outcome, as opposed to opening up ourselves to what can I do to improve that or avoid the experience. Now, that's a different way of contextualizing fear because then when you contextualize it that way you're not worried you're not anxious you're not fretting about it as opposed to where we sit down and you know we're worried about fear and we're anxious about fear you know and uh are we dealing with worrying about outcomes and worries paying interest and money that we didn't borrow so in simple terms a simplified way of looking at it and you know not oversimplifying it because the root cause of it is a false sense of identity. 
all fears come out of identifying ourselves as the starting point as only a human being. And once you realize that, okay, so what are you, what the fear is trying to protect is the death of our human self. That's what fear is ultimately trying to protect. And once you realize that, you could, you could resolve all of these fears to see, okay, what can I do to avoid putting myself through that experience? Rather than allowing the imagination of the outcomes to paralyze us and not do what we can do. Because we have to look at it. What can I do? If there's something you can do, why worry? If the, you look at the situation and there's something I cannot do, why worry? So whichever way you look at it, there's no reason to worry. Because to worry, it's only if you are going to allow yourself to really describe things in a way that's so negative that it depresses you and pushes you down. So hopefully that conversation, that dialogue that we've had has been useful. And I want us to you know, throw in some comments at this point um, before we go ahead and, and, and wrap up. You know, I generally don't want to be on here for longer than an hour, sometimes half an hour. <laughs> but, you know, if you want to go ahead, anyone just jump in and, um, you know, any comment or any any question in the dialogue of what we spoke about. Right. And understanding that is ultimately the fear of death that we're trying to run from. <laughs> and not the fear of losing the house, fear of losing the car, fear of losing all of these other things. Those things all have solutions to them. Right, whatever it is that we're we're fearing at the surface level, there's always a solution that we can do something to avoid. Go ahead, Alaize, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Harry. I mean, this has been really um, insightful. You know, as human beings, we would naturally want to just focus on the physical things, right? Um, but you have made it very clear, you know, that we have to consider ourselves as spirit and soul. So really. Um, in the context of death, spirit and soul would never really die, right? So we have to start looking beyond the physical and start, you know, looking at the root cause of all the problems, you know, that would typically cause fear for us. And that way we might just be able to eliminate that fear. And um, I think it's important to be positive minded. I think it's important to believe in oneself. I think it's important to just know that all of these things happening are temporary. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm grateful that you, um, you, you caught that and you said that. Isn't that powerful? <laughs> right? You know, just, re just realizing. And here's the thing about the spirit and the soul. You have to realize it, though. It can't be theoretical. You cannot agree. You have to realize. A realization means you, have, you know the same way we have air in our nostrils. Nobody believes we are breathing. Nobody believes you have breath. You know you have breath. So spirit and soul has to be a knowing, not a believing. And in the knowing, the truth of that sets us free. And I can testify to that from a personal level. You know, I don't walk around afraid. And I'm not saying it to sound cool. And it's only because of the realization of spirit and soul as a realization. And that realization comes about through meditation, Sometimes it's sudden, sometimes sudden life changes will cause you to have that second birth that we've heard about. Some of us have read about it, but it allows for you to be born again. And in becoming aware of that truth of ourselves is what that is. So thank you very much, Adaisi, for that sharing. That. Anyone else wants to jump in? That was cool. That was really great. I Anyone have, else? I have a little testimony. Uh, yesterday, I talking to a friend of mine and I don't know where he jumped from and they started talking about the uh, about sickness, about cancer, about you know what? I don't want to imagine those things and I don't want to talk about them. And they started arguing with me. It is a reality. You have to listen to what I'm telling you. I said, I don't want to listen and I don't want to hear it. I didn't know you were coming to teach about that. So to me, I was like, no, if you don't want to switch from that topic, uh, it is okay if we can uh, stop here and I would hang up the phone. And we ended up hanging up the phones. 
because of that argument uh, he was bringing along. I thank you for bringing this topic. It is very powerful. And fear is the thing which is killing us. Everything is fear. Everything we are like shaking, doing this. Oh, I've lost my job. What am I going to do? Oh, I've not had going to do in the use trying and and we don't know when we do that, we arm ourselves that we can even end up in the hospital. Thank you so <laughs> much for bringing that talk. And uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, fear, fear will definitely land you in a hospital, right? That's why a merry, a merry heart patterns our bones, right? So fear and just understanding its, it's foundation is key. So thank you very much. Go ahead, Scola. Uh, good morning, good afternoon again. Um, I just want to thank you for this topic because what you just talked, as sometimes you talk and uh, I just feel like you are talking about me and I don't want to be like uh, selfish by saying about me because some of the things that you have you have been talking and you have been teaching us, they uh, relate to, so much to what, so what's the, the life of some of us are going to, have been going through and probably going through. And uh, what you have talked about fear and uh, how to overcome it is very important, especially now like I'm sitting here listening to you because it is going to help me so much that, you know, I'm not going to have fear control uh, my life and I'm not going to allow fear to stop me to do what I'm supposed to do because I'm afraid. Well, I'm, I'm human. I can be afraid for a little bit but I'm praying that that fear doesn't really dwell in me for a long time that I'm not able to jump out and do whatever is necessary for me to come out of it, of it and, to, and you know, to get a solution of which that is going to you know, uh, help me to come out of it and not to think about, oh, if I lose my... If I lost my apartment, if I lost my 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 job, if I lost all these material things, I'm not going to to live because I'll be afraid. I'll be, you know. Personally, fear has taken me taken me to the hospital. I just want to confess that because I have so much so much going in on in my life because of fear because I was afraid, what do I do if I don't have school fees for my children? What, I, what am I going to do if I don't feel my, feed my family? And I've ended into the hospital so many times because of fear. And thank you, Dr. Benjamin, for bringing up this because it's really going to help me. I'm not going to have fear control me. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you too, Scola. You know, um, and just a reminder, when we feel the fear, just remember that it is our description. Term. It is the foundation of our human identity that provides the thoughts about fear. So it takes time to unlock ourselves from our human own. But you're not only a human being. You have to remember that. Yes, we are, all of us have a human being. But you have to remember that you have a human being. You're not, you are not, you not, you're, you aren't a human being. Only you have a human being. And it's a part of ourself, not all of ourselves. So that's that. No, the, the, the fear that you're feeling, remember, when you feel the fear, it is your description of the situation or circumstance that's causing the feeling. 
So once you remember that, it's the description causing the feeling. It, once you remember, because sometimes you'll forget. But once you remember that it's you causing it, then you could stop. But if you're not realizing you're causing it, then you will not stop it because you'll think it is the situation or the circumstance that we're living in that's causing it when it's not the situation and circumstance causing it. It is the way we're interpreting the situation and circumstance. But the way we're able to interpret it is based on human identity. If you believe you're only a human being, you're going to end up having fearful experiences because of the, the thoughts that you have access to. When you become aware that you're spirit and soul, then you open yourself up to another way of thinking that's right now not available to us. If we believe solely and, and with a sense of concreteness that we're only a human being. When we have released that, okay, I'm not only a human being, I'm a spirit and soul as well. It starts to open up other ways of thinking to us and relieve us during those moments because we have other thoughts that are always there, always being broadcast to us of peace and joy and love and tenderness and kindness. They're always there in our mind, but we're not aware of them when we're locked up in the worry and anxiety part of ourselves, which comes from the human identity. So yes, thank you very much, Scola. <laughs> Anyone else wants to, wants to say something before we, we bless ourselves and we jump off of here? All right, for those uh, three of us are new to the conversation, what we did was a few weeks ago, we started to you know, have our conversation. We're opening it up to a few other people and um, opening up to people that we know and invite friends and people to come and listen in. And we are here to have transformational conversations, high-minded conversations that allow for us to eliminate the restrictions and obstacles that we put in our own way. And this is what this is dedicated to. One of the things we do at the end is to bless one another. And we, we know that we are magnificent. All right. I think each and every one of us here would probably agree with that. Um, sometimes we have descriptions about ourselves that do not align with that. So we close with blessing one another to remind us that you are magnificent. So we say, I bless you and your life is magnificent. To remind everybody on here that you are magnificent. Every single one of us are. And even those who joined us and fell off for one reason or the other, they are magnificent too. And even those who do not even know we're here, we're all magnificent. We're created in the image and likeness of our, our grand magnificent creator, which is magnificent. So you and I are magnificent. So with that said, let's bless each other and meet yourself and five names on the line, at least five, and say to them, I bless you and your life is magnificent. So Let's do it. Present that. Bless you, Scola. Mark and your life. Bless you 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 I bless you and your life is magnificent. Amen. Bless you. And bless you, bless you, and I mean, bless you, Mark, and your life is magnificent. Your life is magnificent. Amen. Amen. Love you all. We're on here every Sunday, man. We're going to build this up and help each other to unfold and release our gifts, talents, and our capacities. Love you all. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Bye, Bye everyone.